Hello, I'm Steve. I'm British, as you probably tell from my accent, and I live in England. And I'm a, an English teacher and teacher trainer. And I'd like to talk about uh, uh, schwa. If you find my videos useful, please hit like and subscribe. Thanks a lot. Now, since I put this slide up a few days ago, it's had so many likes. I'm not sure that actually likes. I don't know if it means that people like Schwa, but it's certainly generated a lot of interest. And a lot of consternation. There's a lovely word for you. Consternation means anxiety or dismay. <laughs> The dreaded schwa. Consternation, by the way, has two schwas in it. Now, when I saw all the response that my post was getting, I spoke to a couple of my students. Um, the first one is Natasha, who's Italian. We've been friends for years. She's also studying with me at proficiency level. She also um, assists me with two groups we've got Learn English Takeaway and English for Italians. And I know that she's okay with schwa now, but I asked her if she'd had any problems in the past. I said, oh yes, yes, it's the devil's symbol. She says that because um, they don't have it in Italian, which I should know because I spent four years teaching in Italy. But as I say, she, she, does, she does okay with it now. She reminded me of this diagram, um, a vowel trapezium, which tells you that the schwa sound comes from the middle of your mouth. Now, I'll leave this slide on um, at the end of the video, and you can message me if you want to um, download it, or you can take a screenshot of it. Okay, so let's move on. So having spoken to Natasha from Italy, I then, at the end of a lesson which we had on Monday, I spoke to Paulina, who's one of my Polish students, and I didn't, I mentioned Schwa, which she hadn't heard of, um, but I asked her to pronounce the, the words which you say, see there, a book, father, analytical, and she pronounced them perfectly. So somehow she's got, got to know, before having lessons with me, she's got to know how to pronounce them. She has no problems with them. She doesn't say a book, father, or analytical. Um, she says a book, father, analytical. So, as you know, this is a schwa. This is a sound and a symbol. I said, this is a schwa. I've just used schwa. Uh, this is a schwa. I didn't say this is a schwa. Schwa is often used in pronouncing indefinite articles. So we have a book, a dog, an umbrella. Now, what's this? Hmm? Yes, it's cake. It's a piece of cake. It's also an idiom meaning very easy. And when we say a piece of cake, we use two schwas. Uh, it's a piece of cake. And in fact, when you hear English people speak, you often won't hear the F at the end of that, of, of, a piece of cake, a piece of cake, a piece of cake. I'm guilty of missing it off sometimes. Let's look at some more examples. I had a boiled egg for tea. 
I'm tired. I'm going to sleep now. See you in the morning. I'm saying see you in the morning. I could equally well say see you in the morning. But we British are lazy speakers sometimes. We make things easy. We make it shorter. See you in the morning. See you in the morning. That's how we speak. So schwa. And schwa is often found at the end of words. Wonder. I wonder. I wonder. A uh, carpenter. A carpenter works with wood. The lawyer is in the car car courtroom. Lawyer. Lawyer. Oh, that went right over my head. Over my head is a, an idiom, by the way. It means um, you didn't understand something. Went right over my head. Here we have some more. Agriculture. It would rather sound rather strange if we said agriculture. Agriculture. Or, or, agriculture. Actor. We don't say actor. Oh, the actor is playing Hamlet. The actor is playing Hamlet. I like carrots. Carrots, not a carrot. I like carrots. We say in Britain that carrots help you to see at night. Well, that's what we they used to say when I was a kid. I'm not sure that's true. I enjoy going to the circus. Not circus. 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 And colour. Um, my favourite colour is blue. I've given you two spellings there. The first one is a British one with the OU and the second one is the American one, the US one. Some, some more words with schwa at the end. Calendar. The calendar has dates on it. It shows dates throughout the year. Pillar. Pillar is what you find um, supporting buildings. Um, ancient Rome has upright columns. They are pillars um, in what used to be the Forum. Don't confuse pillar with pillow, what you rest your head on. Uh, but then we have guitar. Now, it's not guitar. So there are exceptions, you have to be careful. But there aren't very many of them. Guitar, guitar. We don't say, I play the guitar. I don't say I play my guitar. I play my guitar. Actor. Uh, don't say actor. Don't say the actor is playing Hamlet tonight. The actor, the actor is playing Hamlet. To be or not to be. And here's another one which is an exception. Um, cantor is, is a singer, um, a choral singer. They're usually in a church. But we, here we don't, we don't say cantor, we say cantor. So again, then another exception, like guitar. But there are not very many of them. Now, schwa is used in both in British English and American English. I've seen that there's been some debate about this with people saying that schwa doesn't exist in US English. It does. And you will find many videos explaining its use. There are some slight differences. Um, here are, I've shown you a few where in British English, and obviously the spelling is different as well with some of these. You have centre, theatre, larder, courier, humour, schwa, at the end of them all. Now, forgive my American accent um, here, I'm sure it's not, not right, but in US in English, when there is an R um, at the end, that R seems to be slightly pronounced. 
and you Americans can um, correct me if I'm wrong. So we would get um, in the center, in the center of New York. You know, I'm 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 going to the theater tonight. Uh, there's no food in the larder. And there's no food in the larder. The courier delivered a package. He's got a great sense of humor. Okay. Um, it's not, not pronounced, that R is not pronounced in British English. It's a schwa. Humor. Humor. We Brits have a dry sense of humor. Or of irony. Some might call it sarcasm. It's interesting, while I was doing this video together, I'm, I also um, play music. I play guitar and piano and I, I'm a singer. And um, when I started thinking about this, I was reminded of a song that we'd done um, we did, did it yesterday in a singing group where I, which I accompany, um, play the accompaniment for. And one of the songs was Elvis Presley's The Wonder of You. And I went back to thinking about how, how it was pronounced then. Of course, you know, Elvis was American. And he sings, That's the wonder, the wonder of you. So again, you've got no schwa there. Okay? And someone posted, uh, when I put the original post up, but schwa is very useful for singers. Now it is, but sometimes schwa isn't used um, in lyrics. I mean, here, here I've just shown you a good example, I and I, I don't think it's necessarily because it's American. Sometimes the sounds are changed in songs, and you're listening to lyrics, they're, they're made longer, they're made to fit the rhythm. And here is an example of it. It wouldn't sound, sound quite right to say, that's a wonder. The wonder of you, we fit the meter, we fit the, the, the rhythm, the tempo of the song. That's a little digression. So back to, back to schwa and where it's used, you find it in the middle of words. Continuity, not continuity, continuity. Um, participate, participate, participate. Generous. You've got two. Generous. Oh, I'm very generous. I give all my money to anyone who wants it. No, that's not true. Okay. Um, paraphrase. Yes, um, you may get this in um, English tests. You know, can you paraphrase this paragraph? Paraphrase. Para. Para. Uh, para. Para. <laughs> so remember, schwa is unstressed. It's weak. It's short. You know, there's, there's not much to actually hear. So I suggest, and I mean this seriously, that you don't stress too much over it. There you are again. Over. Over. To some extent, I think knowing schwa is more important when you're listening to English and understanding um, because you will hear it used all the time. So you're not going to hear vowels pronounced very clearly. I said earlier, we tend to be lazy in the way that we speak. We speak re relatively fast as well. Um, and so we, we slur, we slur over, over words. So knowing schwa and these different sounds is important when you're listening. As far as using it, um, yes, if you can get it right, then great. But if you make the odd mistake, I wouldn't fret too much, wouldn't, wouldn't worry too much. You know, if you say, um, a cat is sitting on the mat, instead of a cat is sitting on the mat. I don't think anyone's going to turn around and say, oh my gosh, his, her pronunciation is awful. 
So, don't stress. Don't, 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 don't. Don't stress. And finally, here's that vowel trapezium again. There you see, see the schwa symbol right in the central position. Well, I hope that's helped and clarified a little bit what schwa is all about. Um, I can't emphasize enough not to stress about it and not to get too worried. If I can help anywhere, in any way, then please get in touch. You can message me and I'll, you know, I'll be glad to try to help you out. Okay, have a good day or evening, wherever you are. Talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.